Today, I'm gonna to show you how to transform the body in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And I'm so excited about today's episode because we get to show you guys how to transform a body in Photoshop, which is, it's a huge topic and it can be kind of controversial. So we're gonna show you some of the best practices so you can actually get a great transformed body, but not push it too far and start to get in the territory of offending people. Cool, so let's go ahead and get into Photoshop. Now, here's our portrait. We've got a lovely girl, and uh, I wanna point out some of the things that we might wanna think about when transforming someone's body to make them look a little bit better. Some of these things we might not actually think about. Um, the first thing you can do, and a lot of people are gonna think like, okay, you know, suck in the stomach and things like that, but there are a lot of other things you can do that really don't even have to touch a subject that can help a person look a little bit better. Some of the things that I like to do, I like to take the entire like waist section of my subject. So like basically from here down, and I'm gonna basically wind up turning that into a selection and then pulling this down. What that's gonna do is it's gonna help lengthen her legs just a little bit and make it look like she's a little bit taller, which is gonna help her look a little bit better. The next thing a lot of retouchers do is they actually make people's necks a little bit longer as well in Photoshop. I know it sounds weird, but it can make people look a lot better. So we're gonna take this area and we're gonna wind up bringing that up as well. And doing just these things can make a person look a lot better. Now, if you do wanna trend, like take care of this area, and bring this in, that's definitely a good idea. And sometimes you might wanna take in legs a little bit as well, and you know, if the subject um, would benefit from it, take in the arms a little bit here as well. But that's just about it. So I would really recommend you know, relatively um, minor adjustments in all of these areas, and then use the combination of all those minor adjustments to create a final image that actually really does look great. Now to actually get this done in Photoshop, there are a couple of different techniques I would suggest using. And the first one is going to be the puppet warp. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate our background layer. So Control or Command J on the background layer, and I'm gonna go to Edit, and then down here to Puppet Warp. Now how the Puppet Warp tool basically works is you can create points anywhere on your subject. Let's just you know click a point here. And if I click and drag, it's going to basically shift my image. Now I've only got one point, so my entire image is shifting. But if I add another point here, it's gonna allow me to shift this point closer to the other point. And you can see, you can really kind of like stretch images however you'd like. Now this is not what we're actually gonna wind up doing, but this, that's the idea of how the Puppet Warp tool works. Okay, so we're gonna to go to Edit, down to Puppet Warp, and you wanna create anchor points for things that you want to basically stay in the same place. So in this case, we're gonna try making her legs just a little bit longer. So I'm gonna create anchor points here on her hips. Just click once here and then once there. That basically means those areas are gonna stay in place. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here on her feet. So we're gonna click here once, and then we're gonna click there once. So these points are gonna be my anchor points, and these points are gonna be, mo be moved. Now, if I just click and drag one of these points, you can see it's gonna be a little bit weird. So let's hit undo. I'm gonna hold the shift key, and I can click on both of these points now. Okay, and now with both of those selected, I can click and drag down, and her feet are gonna come down, but you can see really everything above that point, because we have these anchor points up here, those are gonna stay in the same place. So let's just zoom out a little bit and we'll drag these down and get a relatively nice natural transformation. There we go. Let's hit enter and let's look at the before and the after with that. So we just pulled her legs down just a little bit. Each one of these things, I'm only gonna be doing subtle adjustments. The next thing, let's go ahead and move her head up a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom into our image again. We're gonna to go to edit and then we're gonna go down to puppet warp again. Now this time, I'm going to create a point on either one of her shoulders, and those are the points that's, that are gonna stay the same. Then we're gonna create a point on each, basically, axis of her head. So we've got four points of her head, because I wanna select all these. I don't want her head transforming and you know, changing shape as I actually move it. So I wanna make sure that I surround the head with points, so if I do move those up, all of them are gonna move together. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the Shift key, we're gonna click here, on each of these points, there we go, and we're gonna click and drag that up. And there we go, you can see basically, and you can, it's pulling her face just a little bit as well, so let's just add another point here as well. All right, it says it's too close to the existing point, so we have to add more points. So here what we're going to do, we're going to go to our density, let's choose more points. There we go, now I can actually add more points, and let's go ahead and click one there. 
I'm going to hit shift and make sure I click on all these points. You really don't want to make someone's head, you know, like <laughs> half of their face sagging when you, when you move it up. All right, let's try bringing this up. And there we go. You can see, you know, that's obviously going to be way, way too far. But if we just click and drag this up just a little bit, there we go, and hit that check marks. You can see her face, her face doesn't actually get transformed because we surrounded it in points, but it does lift up just a little bit. And that gives also the effect of bringing her shoulders down. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out and see what we've got as our before and the after. And again, we haven't touched the midsection at all at this point. We've just brought her legs a little bit longer and brought her head up. Let's see how that looks. So here's the before and the after. All right, so now that we made those big adjustments, let's go ahead and take care of her midsection. And we're gonna do that on the same layer. So on the same layer, we're going to go to Edit and then down to Puppet Warp. Now I'm going to take my density, make sure this is on normal now. We always want to start off with normal. Move to more points only if it tells you you need to. All right. Now I'm going to click right here, a couple of points. There we go. And we're going to start bringing these in towards the center. So let's click on this point here, bring this in towards the center. And the same with this point here. And we'll do this up here at the top as well. And I find the Puppet Warp gives us really nice natural results and doesn't make things look like too fake because it does kind of affect things on a global level. It's not just a local area. All right, let's go ahead and hit that checkbox and see what that looks like at the before and after. So there's our before and there's our after. And this is as far as I would recommend going with our subject. Let's go ahead and look at the image with no transformations and with the transformations. So here's the image with no transformations at all, and here are the transformations we applied. So you can see, she doesn't look like a completely different person. It's not crazy, she's just a little bit more transformed from the original. And the second technique we're gonna talk about is using the Liquify tool. Now, I would always recommend starting with the Puppet Warp tool and then going to the Liquify tool. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take this layer and I'm actually gonna duplicate it. So on this layer, Command-J is gonna duplicate that layer, and now we're gonna go to Filter, and then down here to Liquify. So my suggestion with the liquify filter is always use this first tool right up here on the top. This is going to be our forward warp tool. This just allows me to push and pull things as I need them, right? Let's hit undo. Now, generally you want to choose a brush size that's about the size of, let's say we're going to bring her arms in just a little bit. We want to choose a brush size that's about the size of her arm. So let's go ahead and bring our brush size down a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now your pressure, I usually keep this right around anywhere from 20 to 30. You don't want to make huge changes. If you bring your pressure up too large, you can see it's going to really affect too much. So anywhere between 20 and 30, you're going to be able to make small adjustments. And your density, I prefer to keep this up so it actually affects towards the edge of the brush and it helps things look a lot more realistic. All right, and with this, all you have to do is click and drag. So we're just going to click and drag here from the inside up and here from the top down just a little bit. We're going to do this the same right over here from the top down and from the inside out. And if there are any areas you want to smooth out a little bit, you can do that with this tool as well. In this case, I might want to bring this area out a little bit. There we go. And then we can bring her waist in just a tiny bit as well. So this would be more for like general smoothing. And if you were to target areas like, you know, specific smaller areas like her arm or legs and things like that. All right. Great. And again, I really don't recommend going too far with this. I'm, I'm actually a fan of this look. This is, this is what I think looks healthy and good. Um, but obviously, you know, we live in a world where professional retouchers are often asked to do things that, um, you know, might go beyond what most people would consider healthy and good. There we go. Let's just raise that up. There we go. And let's hit OK. So let's take a look at the before and after with the Liquify tool. Here with the Liquify tool, here's our before and our after. And that's it for transforming the body. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we did. So we started off with our base image, and then we created a plan for what we wanted to do. Things like bringing her waist in just a little bit, making her legs a little longer, and bringing her head a little bit higher. So let's go ahead and turn these layers on. Let's group those together and see what the before and the after looks like with our transformations applied. Here's a look at our before and our after. And that's all there is to it, guys. You can see transferring a body in Photoshop really isn't that difficult. Just remember, make sure everyone is on board with the transformation. You don't want to go pissing people off. Make sure this is something that everyone wants, including the person in the photo. The second thing is make sure you keep these toned down a little bit. You don't want to go too extreme with these. Keep these people looking like themselves, and that's going to get you a much better result. 
If you guys enjoyed this episode and you love learning from Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's easy. We'll just click on the screen right now and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We send out free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week. And leave us a comment down below if you have an idea for this episode or you just want to shoot out, hey Aaron, I really like your shirt today. It looks really good on you. Thanks, man. That was really nice of you to say that. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure we'll be getting a lot of those now. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.